Joining me now is retired Defense Department advisor and fellow at the Gatestone Institute, Dr. Harold Rode. Dr. Rode, good to see you, sir. Nice to be here. Thanks for being here. All right, let's talk about uh, this situation here. You, sir, you say that radical Sunni Muslims and the Iranian government have already declared uh, war on the United States quite some time ago. Uh, explain that to us, if you will. Yes. Two things. There, from a Muslim point of view, there are two worlds, the world of Islam and the world of, of war. These are ancient Quranic principles. And these two wars, these two worlds are, at, are fighting each other until the whole world becomes Muslim. Now the truth is there are many Muslims who that's not the basis of their lives. They do want to get along. But both the extreme, the radical Sunnis and the Iranian government, the radical Shiites, make it very clear they've declared war on us. We are at war with them whether we like it or not. And the consequences of that are dire. Newt Gingrich was 100% right in what he said. Right. Well, if this is the case, and it, if they are at war with us, whether or not we want to be at war with them, why does President Obama, like he did, get up in front of, behind that podium and say that this individual was radicalized, as he very well may have been, but that he wasn't tied to a network, it wasn't a sophisticated cell, he basically severed all the ties between ISIS, between radical Islamists and this individual, just to isolate him as one crazy, psychotic individual. Why won't Obama acknowledge that radical Sunni Muslims and the Iranian government have declared war on us? And this is clearly correlated. Well, I, I'm, I can't get into President Obama's mind. I know that under all circumstances, he doesn't want to use the word Islam. If you refuse to define your enemy, as he sees himself, then you're not long for this world. The enemy will be able to do whatever he wants. It's the equivalent if in World War II, the British saying, we are at war with German U-boats and not with the Nazis. You must label your enemy, and only after you label your enemy for what he is do you have the chance of defeating him. And America is the greatest country in the world. And if we were to see these people, that is the extreme Sunnis and the extreme Shiites, for what they were and declare war on them, they're finished. We must eradicate them. And that's the right word, eradicate them, because otherwise, eventually, slowly but surely, they will take over everywhere. Right, and I, I guess the point that I don't quite understand with, and this isn't just exclusive to President Obama himself, it's a, uh, it applies to his entire administration, right. to Hillary Clinton, to Bernie Sanders, to all the high-ranking liberal leaders. The part I don't understand is why accepting the premise of what these terrorists believe, that does not entail accepting the premise of what they believe as being truth. It's just accepting it as what they believe, as what motivates them, what they're using to justify their attacks, their de declaration of wars against us. Well, the ramifications, if we accept that they are at war with us, we're going to have to do certain things. And our government isn't prepared to do that. They are, for whatever reason, afraid. Once you label the enemy as the enemy, you have to take care of yourself. You have to defeat your enemy. They don't want to call the radical Islamists our enemies. And uh, the result is that slowly but surely, what the radical Islamists see is that we are weak. And in the Muslim world, when you are weak, they don't see this as a sign of your being nice. They pounce. They will take over. They will destroy you. And what we saw in Orlando, and San Bernardino is just the beginning if we don't stand up and eradicate the forces of extremist Islam. Right, I understand exactly what you're saying. They see it as a weakness. They see it as a vulnerability to be able yes. to uh, to be able yes. to slit our throats, essentially. And the ramifications aren't just mm -hmm. overseas. It's not just the ramifications. Clearly, Omar Mateen, the terrorist in Orlando, he himself is dead. But the ramifications of not identifying the threat as radical Islam, not declaring war on radical Islam, that's even further reaching. And what I'm specifically talking about is Omar Mateen's wife. There are reports, Dr. Rode, that she knew about this plot, that she was with her husband 
when he purchased the gun, that he texted her or made a phone call to her during the attack while he was in the nightclub. Yet, to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are laws in America during times of war uh, that deal with individuals, with American citizens who aid or abet the enemy. It's called treason. It's called treason. But those laws yes. can't be applied to individuals such as Omar Mateen's wife unless we actually are in a state of war. They can't be applied during this time that Obama just assigns it a random hate crime or a homegrown attack. She can't be tried as a traitor. That's right, which is why it is essential that we understand that they are at war with us and that we declare war on them. In World War II, when Hitler declared war on America after uh, we declared war on Japan, we declared war on Hitler, and that ended up with the end of Europe, the end of Nazism in Europe, liberating Europe, and eventually also liberating Japan. The problem is that classic Muslim warfare is not big armies versus big armies. It's raiding parties. It's individual. The goal is to make your enemy afraid of you, so you will withdraw, and you will accept that he'll dictate what the rules are. That's what Omar uh, Mateen was doing that I, I don't know about his wife, but that's what a lot of these young jihadis, these fundamentalist Muslim soldiers, it's, whether they don't need to be members of a big group or something like that. They gain strength by watching the success of what Omar Mateen did. And if we don't eradicate them, we're gonna have a lot more Omar Martins. Right, and it's not, it's not coincidental motivation or coincidental inspiration. This is the strategy of the larger organization. This is the strategy, this homegrown, yes. lone wolf, individualized, radicalized uh, American citizen in this case. This is the strategy of the larger organization overseas because they know this is the best way, the easiest way uh, to kill us in the greatest numbers. And exactly what they're planning out is coming to fruition because we refuse to recognize it. Uh, Dr. Rode, I appreciate you being on the program today. We are out of time, but I'll talk to you again soon. Up next, Philadelphia has become the first major city in the United States to enact a soda tax. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work out the way they think it will work out. Julie Gunlock is here next.